you know, I'm not accustomed to, you know, I've always done, I've always done these kinds of interviews or cooking segments. They're always very brief. You know, like when we made the pasta. Yeah. It's demo a couple dishes and it's over. Tell me about your career and it's over. But last night was a little challenging for me at points because we were, I mean, we were together for, you know, four or five hours. And four or five hours together with, you know, the camera and you and questions and, you know, you need to keep things going and you need to keep asking questions and you need to keep shooting, what did you say, 12 minutes? Yeah. That is fun and hit all the bases. Yeah. And so, yeah, honestly for me that was, yeah. I, wasn't, I wasn't embarrassed no, to be, yeah. you know, with the entourage, but I felt a little like to kind of stay, like that was a little bit challenging. Mmm. It's a cassonze that has a sweet potato as the filling, toasted almonds, just a little bit of sherry vinegar. And then this one we finish with mozzarella that we smoke in-house. My name is Jonathan Benno and I'm the chef at Lincoln Restaurante. Lincoln Restaurante is on 65th Street between Amsterdam and Broadway, right in the Lincoln Center. With everything that happens up here, or all the performing art houses, it's a pretty inspirational place to work. There's been a lot of allusions to being you know, on stage when you're working on the line at Lincoln. The kitchen is completely open. The food is a modern interpretation of a classic Italian cuisine. It doesn't have a regional focus, but the pasta dishes here are very, very popular. Where's the Strotz? Strotz is bottom right there. This is a strozza preti, so it's another pasta that we make in-house. Has a little bit of squid in it. That's what gives it the color. You know, this is probably one of the few, you know, what we'll call signature pastas at the restaurant. The preti means priest strangler. Strozza, yeah. preti, yeah. priest. I never worked in Italy. I've been lucky enough to to travel there. I'd say I had a good foundation in pasta making over the course of the past couple years. I grew up in Connecticut. I started washing dishes when I was 15. I moved out to Hawaii. I worked out there for a while. Came back to New York. I went to the Culinary Institute of America. Went back out west. And I was lucky enough to work in Napa with Thomas Keller the first year the French Laundry was open. Came to New York for about eight years and worked for Daniel Ballou was working at Kraft with Marco Canora and Tom Colicchio when the opportunity came up to open Per Se. I was at Per Se for six years. I started thinking about what was next. I knew that I wanted to do something completely different. I've always been passionate about Italian food and I've always loved going to Italy and learning about the culture and the cuisine. I've tried to take everything that I've learned up until this point and apply it here. Here we are now two years later with a restaurant that has a firm identity and a strong following. You know, the restaurant knows who it is and what it is and what it wants to be for what you can imagine is a very diverse clientele. You told me to pick a, a restaurant that I really wanted to go eat at. I've been dying to go to Nick Kim's restaurant, Neta, in the West Village. I know Nick 
probably for eight years now since you know he opened Masa and, and we opened uh, Per Se. The two guys that joined me for dinner, Chung Chow and Dominic Tessariario. Chung, I met out in California when he was a cook at Bouchon and I went back out to work at the French Laundry and then was one of the opening sous chefs here. Dominic is a real character. I'm still a character. <laughs> who's probably with us for about six months and, and comes back often and helps us with off-site events and things. Chung is from Hawaii, and I think we share certainly a passion for fish and sushi. Metta for us means fresh ingredients, what's available now versus when it's not in season, so we're very seasonal driven. Simple, honest, and right now what Jimmy's doing is breaking down the color piece. A lot of the restaurants will basically just cut right through it, but we take the time to remove each layer. And what we do with the sinew is uh, we'll marinate it, and then we'll grill it, and we'll make sinew sushi. One of the really beautiful things about eating like that is, you know, it always leaves you wanting more. That two to three bites, and you wish there was a fourth bite, but by the time you realize that there's no fourth bite, the next course is already coming to the table. It's almost the kind of meal and the kind of experience where you, you really want to be quiet and you really want to, to think about what you're eating. And, and I, think you, I think you picked up on that pretty quickly. We cook things very lightly, so when you taste things, it's very gentle. Like this scallop dish, for example. Scallops, warm, foie gras, hot and the uni's room temperature-ish. Our soy sauce that we age in a bourbon cask. If you had said to me, like warm foie gras sea urchin scallop, I wouldn't connect those dots myself, but the way that he did it, definitely one of the best things that I'd ever had. Although I was full, not like overstuffed, but like perfect at the end of the meal. It was one of those meals that I didn't want it to end. I remember the first time I ate at the French Laundry, feeling the same way. Thank you very much. What Nick and his team are doing there, they really stand out in my mind as one of the best meals that I've ever had. Well, after that, we went to you know, probably one of my favorite bars in the city, Peter McManus Cafe. And my wife is a chef as well. That was always kind of our rendezvous point. We would meet there and have a beer together. Would you say it's a hard thing to bring a camera to your favorite bar? That was kind of a funny location. People want to see what's going on, and who is that, and why is there a camera, you know. But I've lived in that neighborhood for a long time, and I know those guys very, very well. You know, for me to be out at McManus at midnight was like, it was surreal almost. My wife and I moved up to Westchester recently. You know, we have two little girls. I started bobbing a little bit towards the end because for me to be out, it's just funny, I guess I'm, I'm getting older. The dish I chose to make for the, I guess, the real, like, munchie. I love sandwiches. Like, I'm crazy about sandwiches, and I, I always have been. I also, I love to work with tripe. So what we did was we took the honeycomb tripe and braised it whole until it was tender, and then kind of cut it into cutlet-sized pieces, breaded it, and fried it. 
So it was a, a tripe cutlet on our country bread with lemon aioli, B&G hot peppers, pickled red onions, and arugula. Amazing. Sometimes life is really grand. <laughs> Just sometimes. Right, well, cheers. Cheers it up. Yeah, we're on dude. You drove, right? I did. <laughs> this is so good.